Praise the Lord. Good evening to everybody. I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight for our online service. We've had several in our church that have been dealing with various sicknesses and with a weather prediction, the decision was made to cancel church tonight, but I'm going to bring to you after a while what I feel like the Lord has laid on my heart and what the Lord has given to me this, this week. Uh, we want to take up prayer requests. If you have a request, you know what it is online. Uh, I want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer tonight, and I ask each of you to remember all those that are struggling with sickness in our church and in our town. I want us to remember our prodigals. I want us to remember our lost loved ones, our lost family members. I want us to pray for Riverbend Recovery, Riverbend Ignited, Riverbend Kids and their leaders, that God would continue the revival that's going on in each one of these groups. They are a blessing to our church, and they are a blessing to our community. And I want to remember Brother GL and Sister Amanda. They are in Alexandria, Louisiana tonight at Because of the Times, and I want us to pray that God will uplift them and that God will refresh them and give them a fresh anointing and that God would bring them back safely. If you would, go to, it, go to prayer with me right now. Lord, we love you. God, you know each and every one of these requests, God. You know the end from the beginning, God, and I'm trusting you, Lord. I'm putting my faith in you, God, that you'll reach down, God, and you'll answer according to our faith, God. I pray, God, that you bring the prodigals back in, those that have walked away from you, God, those that have denied you, Lord, that you'd reach down, God, and move in their heart and move in their soul, God. Each and every one of our lost family members, God, you know each and every one of them, God. People in this town, God, that watch us online, God, we pray for them, God. That they come to the knowledge of the truth, God. We pray for each and every one of these groups that are in our church, God. River been recovery, river been ignited, river been kids, God. That you would bless them, that you would use their leaders, God. That you would raise them up and continue the revival, God. That you started in each and every one of them, God. All these that are sick, God. You took those stripes for our healing, God. We claim it right now in Jesus' name, God. I pray, God, that your will be done, Lord. That your will be done. You know the end from the beginning, God. And I put my trust. And I put my faith in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to, to remember the ways to give tonight. We have our Give, Giveify app. We have PayPal. Uh, you can go to RiverbendPentecostals.com and give. You can give cash or check, and it could be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals, P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri, 638 Six nine. Let's remember the ways to give tonight. Your support helps our church. Your support in giving, and we have a very, very giving church. We have a very, very giving community, and I want to thank the Lord for that. If you're following along in your Bibles tonight with me, I got a subject that I want to talk about, and I want to talk about faith. I want to talk to us about our faith in God. I really felt led this week to study about faith and to talk about faith tonight. Faith is so important in our walk with God, and I hope that I can bring something out tonight that is going to help someone. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the faith chapter. And it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand, and that word understand there means that we perceive with the mind that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. God spoke them into existence. It wasn't something that was already formed or something that was already there. God actually spoke them into existence by a spoken word. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God, and he pleased God by the faith that he had in God. But without faith, it is impossible. It's powerless for us to try to please him 
on our own. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I want to take a look at faith tonight. I felt like in my spirit that somebody is struggling. Somebody is going through some things that they're having a difficult time and they cannot understand what's going on. But I want to talk to you tonight about faith. And I know there's not enough time to cover the broad subject of faith because there's so many different variances of faith spoken up in the scripture, so many different spectrums of faith. But I want us to see and understand tonight that we all have faith. Every one of us have faith. It's a faith that will move us from the realm of the impossible into the realm of the possible. Possible. When the doctor says it, it, that, that you're sick, when the doctor says there's no hope, faith says everything's going to be all right. When I've lost my job and I don't know which way is which, faith says it's going to be all right because I have faith in a God that's going to reach down and take care of my situation. I have a faith in God that's going to move me from that realm of impossible into that realm of possible where things are going to be all right. Tell yourself tonight, I've got faith. I've got faith. I want the word to challenge us tonight. I want it to challenge us. I want it to move us. I want it to change us. I want it to motivate us. Faith moves us. Fred DeVito said that if it does not challenge us, it will not change us. If something does not challenge us, it will not change us. Faith in an unseen God challenges us to believe that his word will do exactly as it says, faith in an unseen God. I haven't seen him. I felt him, but I haven't seen him. And my faith in him will move me into that realm of possible. John Maxwell said, if we're growing, we're always going to be outside of our comfort zone. So many times I've spoke, to, spoke about it. I'm a man of habit. I'm a creature of habit. I do the same thing. I have the same routine. But sometimes... Sometimes I have to get out of my routine. Sometimes I have to get out of the norm. Sometimes I've got to be willing to grow. And that has to take me from where I'm normally uh, 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 comfortable at into a place uncomfortable, to a place outside of my comfort zone to where that I can grow. And that's what faith challenges us to do. It gets me outside of the norm and it gets me into a comfort zone with God. Not of myself, but with God. The meaning of faith in the Greek word is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. And it's a belief or a trust or confidence in someone or something. And I'm challenging us tonight for us to put our faith in God. Throughout the scriptures, we see examples of faith. Just in Hebrews chapter 11, it speaks about these great men and women that had faith. And it said, Noah being warned of God, not seen as yet. He hadn't seen God, but God spoke to him. He hadn't talked to God, but God spoke to him. And he moved with fear. And he prepared an ark to save his family and become the heir of righteousness. Abraham, the father of the faithful, obeyed. And God left his family, obeyed God and left his family not knowing where he was going, looking for a land of promise. Moses, living out of faith, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing to suffer the affliction of righteous instead of enjoying the pleasures of sin for a season. By faith, he forsook all of Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. He couldn't see him. He wasn't there, but he spoke to him. And he had faith. He was invisible to Moses. But Moses moved by faith and obeyed what God had asked him to do. Joseph, by faith, endured through perseverance. Joseph was persistent in, our, in his faith. When I, when I looked at that and I began to think about that, and I believe Brother G.L. even brought that out, that he was persistent in his faith no matter his circumstances. He was persistent in his faith when he was in the pit. He was persistent in his faith when he was in Potiphar's house. He was persistent in his faith when they threw him in the dungeon. And he was persistent in his faith 
when he was in the palace. It was the same God in good times and bad times. And Joseph had persistent faith in the same God. No matter what his circumstances was, no matter where he was at, he put his faith in God. He was persistent. Joshua and Caleb had faith and by faith when things seem impossible. They lived and received their promise of entering and lived into the promised land, into the land of Canaan. They were only two men over the age of 30 that made it through the wilderness and got to enter into the promised land to enjoy the promised land that God had spoken to them because by faith, when the spies were sent in, Joshua and Caleb said, we're well able to take the land. Joshua and Caleb said, there's nothing impossible that God can't do. We are well able by faith that we can take this land right now. But the ten said, no, we can't. They gave an evil report. And so they wandered in the wilderness 40 years. But through faith, they persisted. Through faith, faith they persevered. How does a person receive faith? Romans 10 and 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I hear his word. I hear his word spoken. I hear his word preached. I hear his word taught. And because of that, I believe. It's as simple as that. It's not a complicated matter. It's as simple as the word is spoken, and I believe. The book of Revelation talks about the seven churches, and each one of them, he says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. That's all it takes for us to have faith. It's for us to hear what the Spirit has to say. I've, I've often said when, when studying about faith and teaching about faith, that if you do not believe Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, then you don't have faith. It's as simple as that. You don't have faith if you cannot believe that God created the heavens and the earth. Romans 12, or Romans 12 and 3 it tells us that God has dealt to every man a measure of faith. He's given to every man a measure of faith. The scripture says that God has given to every man a measure of faith. A measure is a certain amount. I believe that it means he is giving everyone, all of us, the right amount of faith, the right measure of faith. And that being said, I ask this question, why does it seem that some people have more faith than others? Can our faith increase? Most people doubt that faith works. Most people don't doubt that faith works. They just doubt that they have enough faith to receive what it is they are believing for. Everyone has been given a measure of faith. The word measure in Greek is a metron. It means it's a vessel for receiving and determining the quantity of things. An instrument for measuring my body, my mind is a vessel of faith. I receive what God has given to me. We each have the right measure of faith. It's not so much about the quantity of faith, but it's about the quality of faith. The faith that we have. My faith, my little faith, the Bible talks about mustard seed faith. My little faith that I have coupled with the great big God that I serve makes anything possible. Anything is possible when I take my faith and I couple it together with God. I have more than I need to receive what he is willing to give me. Matthew 17 and 20 and 21 and said, Jesus tells his disciples, he said, And then because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence unto yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? This kind goeth out, not but by prayer and fasting. Sometimes we have to couple things together with our faith. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit of prayer. Sometimes it's going to take a little bit of 
fasting. Sometimes it's going to take us pushing away from that table. Sometimes it's going to take us getting on our knees and falling in front of God and saying, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I put my faith in you and I need you more than anything right now. I need you. I need you right now. Lord, I need you. I'm reminded of a, of, of a story and, I, I, and I, I've, I've talked about it before. When we talk about faith, when Polycarp, the bishop of the church of Samaria, was asked by the Roman authorities to curse, if he wanted to be released, curse God. And he replied, 80 and 6 years I have served him, and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who has saved me? The Roman officer threatened, if you do not change your mind, I will have you burned alive with fire. And Polycarp remained undaunted. And because he refused to curse Christ, they burned him alive at the stake. He willingly died because he did not want to refuse God because he had faith in an unseen God. He had faith in a God that he had never seen. Centuries earlier, when the three young men named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faced a similar threat, they answered and so they said, O Nebuchadnezzar, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fire, burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, we do not and will not serve your gods. It's a similar experience, but two different outcomes. Polycarp was burned alive, but the Hebrew boys left the furnace unsinged without the smell of smoke even on their clothes, without their linens and their hoses not even singed. You couldn't even tell they were in the fire because there was a fourth man in the fire with them. They had faith that God was going to deliver them. God is simply not faith in what God can do. These men showed us. That faith in God is not simply faith in what God can do, but it's the belief that God is God, whether He chooses to deliver us or not. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's still God, no matter what the outcome says, no matter what the final decision is. It's our decision to choose Him and follow Him through. Hebrews 11 and 13, and I don't believe I gave Heidi the scripture, says that all these died in faith, not having received the promise, the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on earth. They seen the promises afar off that God had given to them. They didn't, they didn't get to that promise. They didn't get to obtain that promise, but they kept the faith because they sent it afar off. They kept their faith in God. No matter what was going on in their life, they kept their faith in God. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance. It's the assurance of things hoped for, and it's the evidence of things not seen. That word substance carries with it the idea of something solid, it's something real. It's something that you can set something on. It will support it. Whatever my faith is, it's going to be supported. It's a, it's a, it's a substance. It's an assurance. There are, in fact, two realities in every instance of true faith. First, the inward confidence of claiming what we believe. I believe it, so I'm going to claim it by faith. And the second thing is actually receiving the blessing once I put my faith in God and it comes to pass and that it happens. Faith is not a future hope, but a present fact. Hope is expecting and faith is accepting. I accept it that you're going to do it just exactly what you said you were going to do. Abraham had faith when God told him he would make him a father of a great nation. Abraham had faith. We have a text message among us men in the morning. We share scriptures and we sell, we share stories and different things. And the other morning, Brother Brother Tripp King shared with us a message by Brother Matthew Tuttle. And it was called The Characteristics of a Diehard Jesus Fan. And he said there was a lady that had prayed back through and got the Holy Ghost. 
And she wanted her husband, her husband that was backslidden, she wanted to see him saved. So she would take his suit coat and his tie to church with her every time she went. And she would place it on the pew beside her. But that's not all. When the music started playing and the worship started, she would get up and she would run the aisles and she would take that coat and she would run the aisles with her husband's coat. She was having faith that he was there with her at that moment and at that time. And God saved him and filled him with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a backslider that had prayed through because his wife had faith. His wife seen the impossible. She looked and she knew that God was going to honor her prayer by faith. And that's not the end of the story. They wanted a child. They couldn't have children. So she goes out and she buys baby clothes. And she brings them to church with her. And as the worship started, she would run the aisle with those baby clothes. And God not only gave her one baby, but he gave her several babies because of her faith in an unseen God. I thought that was such a tremendous story of faith. Faith is not a vision. It, faith is not vision, but it lives in the unseen. I can't see it, but I have faith that it's going to take place. I have to visualize it and know that God said it, and so it is. We walk by faith and not by sight. Seeing is not believing. Seeing is a material demonstration. Faith is confidence in the Word of God. It is a new sense that sees what others cannot see and hear what others cannot hear and lives in a world beyond the awareness of our material senses. It's not something that I can see by my visual eye, by my natural eye. It's something that I've got to see with the eye of my mind. I read this, I read this in Matthew Henry's commentary on faith. And it really struck me as, as something that we need to really, really listen to when we talk about faith. Is it, it is the evidence of things not seen. Faith demonstrates to the eye of the mind the reality of those things that cannot be discerned by the eye of the body. It is designed to serve the believer instead of sight. To be to the soul all that the senses are to the body. What I can't see with my natural eyes, what I can't see with my vision, by faith, I can see it with my mind. I see it happening. I see it taking place. Because I have faith in an unseen God. I have faith that God is going to do exactly what He said He would do. I see faith as being blind. Faith is believing without seeing. Even when we believe. Even, we, even when what we believe is going to happen never takes place. One writer said, when sight ceases, then faith has a chance to work. Faith can also bring it into sight. When the centurion told Jesus his servant was at home sick with the palsy and in torment, Jesus said, I will come and I will heal him. And the centurion replied, he was not worthy that he should come to his home, but for Jesus thus to speak the words and his servant would be healed. He told Jesus, he said, I'm a man of great authority like you are. And when he gave orders, his men obeyed him. The Bible said that Jesus marveled that there was not so great a faith, no, not in all of Israel. And I ask myself, what was so great about his faith? What was so great about his faith that it made Jesus marvel? I think there's only two other instances where it says that Jesus marveled within the Scripture. What was it that caught his attention? It was simply that the man knew all he had to do was speak the word. All Jesus had to do was speak the word. He believed it. It would be done unto him. And the scripture said the servant was healed in the self self same hour. This man understood that all that had to happen was Jesus speaking the words of faith. And his servant would be healed. That is what I call blind faith. All you've got to do is speak the word. All I've got to do is trust God. All I've got to do is put my faith in Him and believe that it's going to take place. Believe that it's going to happen.
believe that it's going to take place. Faith takes God at His word. Faith does not insist that He be conformed to our ideas. I remember a few years ago, and Sister Kim may remember this, but Brother Gio was teaching on holiness. And she made this statement that she did not understand some of it. She said, I, I don't understand all that you're teaching. I don't understand some, some of it. But because the Bible said it and Brother GL taught it, she was going to do as the Bible said. And to me, that's faith in its purest form. She said, I don't completely understand it. But because the Word says it, because His Word says it, because it's written in the Bible, she says, I'm going to honor it and I'm going to obey it. By faith. That's blind faith. That's blatant faith in its purest form. I've known others that have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. That God opened up their understanding of His Word to where they actually saw it for, him, for themselves. Faith is what brings those things God has provided for us from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. What's out there, He brings in and it causes it to happen by bond faith true biblical faith is a confident obedience to God's word in spite of our circumstances and our consequences no matter what's going on in my life I've got to say Lord I've got faith that you're going to take care of it maybe someone's struggling with that tonight I don't know what's going on in your life but I've got some stuff I want to share with you in just a minute that he spoke to me he said that we need to put our trust in him I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I believe that there's somebody. And I know in the audience that I'm talking to on the internet, there's surely somebody that way. But there's somebody in specific that you're dealing with circumstances in your life. And you've got consequences going on in your life. And you're just at your wit's end, so to speak. Let me tell you something. Put your faith in God. And He's going to take care of the situation that you found yourself in. Moses saw God as an invisible God in Hebrews eleven twenty seven. It says that he forsake Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You may not see him tonight. I cannot see him tonight. I feel him. I feel him so strong in this place right now. And you can feel him also. But I've got to put my faith in him. I've got to trust in him. Faith. Apprehends as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. It rests on the fact, it acts upon it, and it is upheld in the face of all that seems to contradict it. Faith is real seeing. Keep this in mind. As we've talked about the men of God, we're talking about men who had some spiritual force called faith that the book of Hebrews speaks to us about. We're talking about men who trusted in an unseen God and trusted in God's promises. Faith is just, it's more than being sure about God's promises. It's an awareness of the entire invisible sight that God has in store for us. Second Corinthians tells us, for we walk by faith and not by sight. I walk by faith because I know it's going to take place. I can't see it. But I understand that God spoke it in His Word. I understand that it's going to come to pass. We need to learn not to depend on... We, we need to learn not to depend as much on what we see in our circumstances. You see, Peter in the boat, and Jesus comes by, and Jesus invites him out to the water. Peter goes out of the boat, and the Bible says that Peter's walking on the water. A miracle. He did it by faith. But things begin to happen and things begin to take place. And Peter began to look all around him. And he began to see the sea boisterous. And he began to hear the winds blow. And the Bible says that he began to sink because he was aware of his circumstances. He was aware of what was going on around him. And because of that, he began to sink. We need to learn not to depend on much about what we see in our circumstances. Sometimes our circumstances look hopeless, but more and more on trusting in an unseen God, in the great hand of God. Looks can be deceiving. Our problem, and I'm speaking for myself tonight, is we don't like to go where we don't see where we're going. We want to be able to visualize it. We want to be able to see. 
Me walking down these steps, I don't want to attempt it with my eyes closed. I want to be able to see where my feet are going to land. The African Impala can jump to a height of over 10 feet and cover a distance of greater than 30 feet. Yet, these magnificent creatures can be kept in an enclosure in any zoo with a three-foot wall. The animals will not jump if they cannot see where their feet will land. They will not jump if they cannot see where their feet will land. Faith is the ability to trust what we cannot see. And with our faith, we are freed from the flimsy enclosures of life that only fear allows to entrap us. Brother T.F. Tenney said, either your faith will move a mountain or your fear will create one. Your fear will create problems in your life. That's why it's so important that we have faith. The English Standard Version Study Bible has an excellent comment on biblical faith. It says it's an assurance and conviction. The author indicates that biblical faith is not a vague hope grounded in imaginary or wishful thinking. Instead, faith is settled confidence. That's something in the future, something that is not yet seen, but has been promised by God will actually come to pass, but God, God will bring it about. Thus, biblical faith is not blind trust in the face of the contrary evidence, not in the unknowable a leap into the dark. Rather, biblical faith is a confident trust in an eternal God who is all-powerful. He's infinitely wise. He's externally trustworthy. The God who has revealed himself in his word and in the person of Jesus Christ, whose promises have proven true from generation to generation, who will never leave nor forsake us. Faith sees the invisible. It believes the incredible, and it receives the impossible. Nothing before and nothing behind. The steps of faith fall on seeming void and finds the rock beneath it. When I take that step, I want to go slow right now because God showed this to me. I've got a book by uh, Priscilla Shire. Uh, she uh, has a book about spiritual warfare. And it says this, I wrote these quotes down that she has in this book and it spoke to me and I feel like that somebody needs to hear this tonight. We're talking about faith. Faith in the unseen. Faith in God. Faith knowing that God is going to perform what He said He would do. Good faith isn't a certain size or strength. It's simply faith that's directed at and rooted in a good God. Good faith isn't a certain size or certain strength. It's simply faith that's directed and rooted in a good God. If you are struggling to move forward, someone hear this tonight, someone receive this tonight by faith. If you're struggling to move forward in obedience to God, you do not need bigger faith. You just need to realize how big your God is. You don't need bigger faith. You just need to realize how big your God is, how great your God is. The more faithful and strong you believe Him to be, the more willing you will be to depend on Him. Your level of faith will always be tied to your perception of God. Listen to me again. Your level of faith will always be tied to your perception of God, how I see God, how I visualize God. If you don't need more faith, you need to be more accurate. You don't need more faith, you need a more accurate view of the faithfulness of your God. God is faithful. God is true. He's everything that we need. Faith in an unseen God. Knowing that my perception is tied to how I see God. My faith is tied to that perception of how I see God, how I visualize God and the things that He's done for us and the things that He's done through us. It's unbelievable what God can accomplish. Know this, that Hebrews 11 and 6 says, 
but, with, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. A continual search for God. We can't please him. It's impossible to please him without faith. He's got to see faith in us. He's got to see faith that we have in him. Things that faith does. Faith that overcomes. 1 John 5, 4 and 5 said, Faith, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? We are born into an, etern and into an eternal life through faith. We are declared righteous before God by faith. We are forgiven by faith. We are healed by faith. We understand the mysteries of creation by faith. We learn God's word by faith. By faith, we understand things to come. We walk by faith and not by sight. We overcome the world by faith. We enter God's rest by faith. We are controlled and empowered by the Holy Ghost through faith. The issues of faith flows through every aspect of our relationship with God and our service for Him. Faith is our source of strength, our provision. It's our courage. It's our guidance. It's our victory over the world system, the flesh and the devil. Faith is the only thing that can sustain us in trials and persecution that are predicted in the last days. It is therefore imperative that we understand exactly what faith is. And how we get it and how it grows in us. Faith reveals the character of God to others. Through us, people can see faith. Through us, others can see faith. When we reflect God's image, His joy, His wisdom, His love and His peace. In every circumstance, good or bad, no matter what comes our way. That's talk, talking about being consistent in our walk with God. Just as Joseph was, he was persistent no matter the circumstances, no matter where he was at. The world would see Jesus through us. The life of every believer should be magnifying glass, focused on Christ, because what we do tells the world what we believe. Doing demonstrates our belief. The way I act and the way that I conduct myself, it shows others how I believe, and it shows others how I live. Sister Corey shared something on Facebook right before church. And it said this. It says the only way our faith will ever strengthen is for us to use it. Faith is like a muscle. We have to use it to strengthen it. We need to apply thought and prayer to our decisions. Then trust God for the outcome. We need to set our sights on growing in faith and not shrinking back for fear of failure. We need to exercise our faith so that it grows. When our faith crumbles in the midst of a hard circumstance, we're telling the world that God is not trustworthy. He's not faithful and does not love. If Christians display such a lack of trust, then how can unbelievers be accepted, expected to put their trust in Christ? We must instead show the world that faith is always the answer. Faith in God is is always the answer. He is our refuge in the time of trouble. Faith enables us to become overcomers. Faith not only enables us to overcome the flesh and the world, but also overcome the devil. Only faith can repel the enemy. Thus, when we lose, we leave ourselves wide open for his vicious attacks. In closing, I want to leave this with you. Overcoming faith enables us to maintain a relationship with God. Even in times of suffering, even though the earth should change and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, overcomers know that they are being held by an unseen God. Overcoming faith places its hope and its expectation in God and God alone. So tonight, in closing, I want to encourage someone. I don't know what you're facing. 
I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know what you're going through. Maybe it's sickness. I, I have no idea because I know we've got several that's sick. But I want you to know that if you hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, hold fast the profession of your faith without wavering, He is faithful to us that is promised. Stand firm in your faith. Stand firm in your faith. Let your faith arise. Let your faith grow. Know that you, if you put your faith in God, that He can do exactly as the Scripture has promised us to. In closing tonight, uh, I'm not for sure what's going to take place this weekend. I've got confidence, hopefully, that we will have church. But pay attention to the Facebook uh, church text over the next couple of days, uh, looking for info on our services. Uh, God bless. And good night, everybody be safe. Huh? Please share the service tonight so you will be entered into the drawing for a gift card. Thank you. Good night.